What is going on everybody, my name is Citizen Viper and welcome to today's tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how I make my water shaders. So, in specifically, we're going to talk about two water shaders. One, I will show you how to make the dirty water shader that I use in my flooded car renders in the, in the garages, for example, here on the left. And then also the other water shader with the foam and a little more clear water, like on the right side here. So without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. So the first shader we're going to talk about is the dirty water shader. Uh, and I'm gonna start with this because this is the easiest one to create. So let's open a new project here, hit render really quick so we can see what we're doing and let's start. So the first thing you're gonna do is go you're gonna create a plane. Of course you can create this with a cube as well, in this case it doesn't really matter. Later on when we create the other shader uh, you should be using a water cube not a water plane. But in this case it doesn't really matter too much. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create a regular good old glossy material in your octane render. Next up you're gonna go into your bump map and set the texture to a Cinema 4D noise. So one thing about the regular C4D noise here, since these are regular C4D shaders, those are limited by Octane to a 128 to 128 resolution. If you want a higher resolution, just go into the Octane tab, click Render Settings, go to Settings, and then C4D shaders, and set the render size to something higher. In this case, 128 should be fine since the bumps that we're gonna use are not too tiny. So it should be fine and you won't see a lot of pixelation going on, but we will see that later. Now the C4D noise right here, set that to turbulence. And as you can see, we already got a little, get a little wavy water surface. However, it's still the wrong color. So for my dirty water shader, I usually use something very like dark, yellow, green, or orange kind of. Um, so let's do that. Um, so let's go to something like brown, so around here, get a little bit of saturation going in there and then make it like very dark. Um, it's not quite there yet, let's go maybe towards a little bit more yellow, something like that, that looks like really dirty gooey water. Let's try and apply that to our plane and see what it looks like. So as you can see right now, the noise is kind of small. Uh, actually, let's put a car in this so we can see how big these waves are. As you can see, we put the car in here and the water waves are kind of small. So let's just increase the size using the global space setting right here. Let's go maybe to 500. So what I do usually with this dirty water is I make it slightly transparent. Let's go to a float value of 0.89. This is basically not really looking through it. So it's not a completely opaque plane, but it's actually a little bit see-through, but the water is so dirty that you really cannot see through it at all. However, what you need now is you need something that is underneath the water, since you kind of can see underneath it. Uh, what I usually do is I just copy that same plane, uh, put it a little lower. Uh, don't worry about don't worry about the actual height of the water. Just put it like roughly where the where the ground would be, and then you just add a very dark texture. It doesn't have to be a ground texture, but just put any dark ground texture underneath it. And next up for the debris. So the the way I add the debris is always the exact same way. And the debris is not on the water shader actually, but it's a different plane that is set on top of the water. So let's look through Quixel for some cool debris textures. So you will find these textures under decals since they have uh, opacity lamps as well. So here you have a lot of like different debris or dirt you can add. So let's look if we can find some good trash. So let's try the small garbage scatter right here. So I advise you to import these textures in at least 4K resolution for this use case, since anything below can sometimes create uh, some black lines caused by the displacement maps. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's import this. So here we have our debris map. Um, let's make a copy of our water plane. Let's just copy that. Let's put this in a nice hierarchy so we know what's going on and replace our top material with this garbage material. And now you can see what I mean with the displacement. Of course, this is an extreme case right here because the texture is also way too big. Since the, since the plane is intersecting with the water shader, it can create these black outlines. First of all, let's make this garbage smaller. So let's set this to cubic. This should already make it a lot smaller, maybe too small. And let's go maybe to 1000. Well, that's maybe too big. Let's go a little smaller, 500. Yeah, 500 should be fine. That looks around the right size. And now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, let's set the displacement resolution to our texture resolution, which was 4K. As you can see, that already makes these uh, outlines a lot rounder. And you'll also see if you get these like small intersecting lines, um, that will almost get rid of them entirely. 
I also would like to increase the texture height to something like 20. So we get a little bit of depth on the trash going on. And now the last thing you should do in order to get rid of these black lines is either move the plane up a little bit or what I like to do, I like just to play with the mid level here. If I decrease the mid level, as you can see, the trash moves up slightly and just do that until you don't get any black lines anymore. Just like that. So now, as you can see, we got ourselves our trash water. And if you would like to have higher waves, what you can do is you can add a displacer and put that underneath both of these planes and add also a noise for your waves. The important thing is that you use the same noise on both of the planes, the trash and the water, since those cannot intersect in a different way because you want to have the illusion of the trash floating on the water. But be sure to increase the plane segments to something like a thousand in order to get nice looking waves. And this, by the way, is also how you would animate this. So if you animate your noises, you can animate the water and also the trash floating on top of it. So now that I showed you how to make the dirty water shader, I want to show you how to make the, the, the more clear water shader that I used for my other uh, flooding renders. So for that, let's just use the same exact scene. The trash can actually just remain where it is, but let's turn it off for now. So here we're going to use a composite material. And now let's add two materials. We only need two, so add material one and add material two. So our material one will be a specular material with our watercolor. So let's go to basic and set this to specular. In order to get the water waves, we use the same technique as before. We will use a Cinema 4D noise that is plugged into the bump map right here. Again, set this to turbulence and let's, let's just use the same scale as before, which was 500. Then also add absorption medium node that you plug in straight into the medium tab right here. This, me this absorption medium will ensure that if you use a volumetric shape like a cube, a sphere or a cylinder, not a plane like we did now, that you actually get density in it. So, you know, the water essentially gets darker the lower you get down and light doesn't scatter through it anymore as much. And in the absorption medium, we will just plug a RGB spectrum. And this RGB spectrum will tell our absorption medium what color our water will have. So let's plug that into the absorption tab right here. The material two can actually stay just like that. This is actually our foam material and you can use a different foam material uh, with more details. I usually for my renders just use, I usually just use a white plane diffuse material. In your specular material settings, you can also set the reflection value to something like 0.2 because we don't need that much reflection going on. And then in the, in the IOR value set it to 1.2. So now let's create a node setup that tells our materials where to mix. So it tells the water where it's foamy and where it's not. And we're gonna do that using a dirt node essentially. So let's start with that. So let's add a, add a dirt node and let's plug that into a gradient. So the reason I add the gradient is because I use the gradient to control the contrast of the dirt map and the spread of the dirt map. Uh, you actually have a spread setting in here as well. However, with the gradient, it's a lot more controllable in my opinion. And before we plug these two nodes into the mask layer too, we add a add node. And that is because we're gonna add this gradient to a different texture that has a water foam texture going on. So now let's out add our foam texture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a image texture. Now, and now what you need is essentially a black and white water texture. I really like this one right here. It's not seamless and it's not black and white, but it works for most of the time. Since this is a little more difficult to use, I will use this one specifically to show you how to overcome this problem as well. So let's just add this water texture here. I also highly recommend to use a transform node here so you're able to change the scale of this texture without changing the scale of the rest of the system. So to prevent tiling on this water texture, also add a chaos node. And this chaos node can actually remain as it is, just make sure to enable rotation. And then plug the chaos node right into a color correction node. This is essentially to have more control over the contrast and gamma of this specific text right here. And plug that into the add node right here. That is pretty much all that we need to do in order to create this water shader. Now, last, last thing you need to do is of course, plug the add node into the material to mask. Actually, a few more things that we're gonna do in order to make this look a little better. I added the RGB spectrum to our transmission channel, which sets the main color of our water, which is a very light yellow orange, which creates this dirty brown water. And then in the RGB spectrum that goes into our absorption medium, I added a light, very, very light blue color, just so essentially the absorption that the, the further down you go in the water, the more blue it looks, it creates a really nice look. 
and the settings for the absorption medium are also pretty straightforward. It's just a very low density of like 0.7. Don't just copy this exact value. Make sure to, you know, go into your render and then play around with the setting until your water looks dense enough for your liking. For the node settings, we'll go into that in a second. And then also our image texture had to be inverted since we used an add node uh, for it to mix in the right way. Also here in the color correction node for our water texture, I used a lower gamma to make it a little brighter. So as you can see, the density value that I used here is a little bit too high. We can't really look through the water. So what you can do here is with the density, just put that down until you like what, what it looks like. I personally like it like this. However, our bump map is still too big. So let's increase the bump value on this by a lot. Let's go to something like 700. So now that we put all the right settings in, let's go into the dirt node and change the values there a little bit. As you can see, we already get these like nice little foam pieces going around. Maybe these are a little bit too big. Let's try to make them a little smaller. Maybe let's go with like 0.1. I think that looks quite nice. And now with the radius setting right here, you can say how much of the foam should be visible and how far it should spread. As you can see, if I move this up, more of the foam is visible. And if I move it down, less of the foam is visible. You can also up the strength a little bit here in order to get more of that. Or in the color correction settings, you can, in the color correction setting of the foam texture, you can also decrease the contrast a little bit, maybe up, maybe up the gamma. And just like that, you can tr control the foam. So I quickly added a different HDRI map since the direct daylight kind of looked a little weird. But here you can see now the depth a lot better. So what I want to say, if you now also want to add bigger waves like in other renders I made, what I recommend is using the displacer again. This also works, like I said, for the trash on top. Before we add the trash, let's increase the width segments of all our uh, planes on top. So let's go to 500. I think 500 should be all right, but we'll see if it is in a second. And now let's add a displacer to all of these. So the top water plane is this one. So let's see what it looks like when we add a noise to our shader right here. It's a little too big and a little too wavy. So let's increase the global scale to something like 700. 700 could be all right, but let's try to change the noise to turbulence first, which should get us better results. Maybe increase it even further. Let's try 2000. 2000 looks all right, but it's a little bit too tall. So let's go into the height settings and go down to like five. If we now intersect our trash plane with this one, as you can see what happens is that the trash will intersect here. Actually here, it doesn't look too bad, but let us let's let me show you what I mean by increasing the height again a little bit. So let's do eight. As you can see, it will create these really weird blotches around here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into shading, shader and copy the shader and paste it in here. And that's all. So now the shader has the exact same displacement as our water and makes the trash look like it's floating on top of our water. And as you can see, if we now increase the dirt map strength a little bit more, and maybe also in the color correction settings of our of our foam texture, if we go down in the in, if we go up in the gamma again a little bit, and then you can just play around with the settings like the gradients and see what you can come up with. As you can see, now we have a nice foam texture going on here, maybe a little bit less even, maybe even less spread. And that way we create this cool water shader. So this was the tutorial how to how I make my water shader. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If it helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and make sure to comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.